Well, hello again from Kingston. It's a beautiful sunny day and it's been good weather for most of this period. So without any delay, let's go see what's been happening. At last, we seem to have found some summer. The good weather and fine conditions for construction are enabling the project team to move forward more quickly than ever. Some major developments have occurred and we'll talk about them at the end. In some respects though, this has been a period of consolidation. Much work goes on across the site without great fuss, but contributing importantly to the overall results. Tasks like installing safety lines and placing the steel bearer plates that support the major sections of the bridge's steel components are all vital activities and should be recognised. But leaving detail behind, let's take a moment to get an overall impression of the state of play. Coming back to earth, it's certainly the case that movement forward from the west end involving the concrete girders has continued relentlessly. Four girders arrived during the period, and this means that there are now a total of 54 concrete girders in place. The routine of placing the girders is now becoming second nature to the crane operators and the skilled crew who assist them. It's worth mentioning too that the task of bringing them onto the narrow causeway with limited room for manoeuvre demonstrates the experience and expertise of the delivery drivers as well. It's amazing to observe the accuracy with which each of these concrete pieces weighing more than 80 tonnes is placed. The work that began in the last period to place the concrete slabs on top of the girders has continued at quite a pace. Besides the concrete slabs, work is also taking place to introduce walkways to each side, which will assist both safety and further installation activities. As part of this ongoing work, at least one more delivery of concrete slabs from Decast and Utopia occurred during the week. The west abutment appears to be ready for service, and as you look beyond it to the east, the line of the girders now makes quite an impressive double curve. At the east end, work has been occurring to reinforce and complete the half of the bridge steel structure that is already in place. Additionally, on the south side of the steel structure, during the last working day, steel sections were placed that will support one of the two portions of the bridge that feature projecting lookout points. This work kept both a crane and iron workers quite busy and several sections were placed in the course of half a day. It was interesting to see how, despite being out of sight of the crane operator, an iron worker on a lift was able to maintain communication and ensure precise placement of each section as his companion fastened it to the existing structure. On dry land at the east end, the framing for the abutment there has been completed and we must be only days away from the delivery of concrete. While concrete is on our mind, it's worth noting that the concrete cap on Pier 14 was poured during this period. A special pump truck from Maple Concrete Pumping arrived on the east side and made its way to Pier 14. It was joined on site by no less than six concrete carrying vehicles from CBM, Canada Building Materials, their plant in Elginburg. For those who are interested in figures and statistics, they should know that about 55 cubic metres of concrete were delivered. The team taking delivery of the concrete and directing it were clearly very skilled, but did find time to give the drone a quick wave. As the week comes to an end, Pier 14 can be seen covered in the typical red cladding that provides insulation and assists the concrete to cure. Back at the east end, beyond the fenced construction site beside Gore Road Library, there was a visit this week by representatives of Tomlinson, the company that will lay the roadway from Highway 15 to the bridge. Several individuals spent much of a morning walking the ground, examining the layout and discussing work that will start very shortly. You may have noticed many Tomlinson vehicles on site before now. The company's been engaged in grouting the concrete girders on the west end. On Thursday last week, as the police might say, acting on a tip-off, thank you Marie, 
it was possible to intercept the two vehicles from Walters Group delivering two of the largest steel sections that make up the bridge. These sections are particularly wide and take up two highway lanes demanding a four-vehicle escort. A couple of days earlier, a trailer had arrived carrying what are clearly steel reinforcement pieces for the bridge. There are now four major steel pieces awaiting installation at the East End. As the working week drew to a close, a significant event occurred when the award-winning lift bridge was raised. This respects an obligation to provide access to the Rideau Canal, which was due to open on May the 15th. The action you're watching is speeded up. The actual raising of the section took some 15 minutes. When you're moving that weight of steel, you're not in a hurry and everything is done in a very controlled manner. The first person to pass through the open bridge was a local fisherman. But this was just one of the major developments in the period that I teased at the beginning of this update. Perhaps the most exciting event for the nerds among us was the arrival this week of an extraordinary machine from a company called Gomaco in Iowa. This came in several parts and it will take a little while to assemble it and prepare it for operation but it is capable of laying concrete roadway with a minimum of manual labour and fuss. Before very long, it will sit astride the concrete girders and lay the actual roadway of our third crossing. If that doesn't excite you to think about the fact that we've reached that advanced stage of construction, then have someone check your pulse for signs of life. As always, if you want to know more about the amazing companies and organisations that make up the team engaged in this historic project, check out the links in the description below. But before I go, I'd just like to mention that it's sometimes interesting to look up from the site and see what's going on in the background. A railway line runs close to the river and last week a long train carrying turbine blades for windmills passed by. Quite a sight. Okay, expect another update in about a week. Meanwhile, Stay safe and slap on the sunscreen. So there you have it. Exciting times and obviously much more to come. Don't forget, like, subscribe and click the bell if you want to be certain of uh, keeping up with the, uh, the, the future updates. Take care. Thanks for watching.